Hello everyone, hello. Today I'm going to talk about trusses. Trusses, so if you're into bridge building, other things like that, wonderful stuff. This is for you. I've been experimenting with some trusses for about two hours and I'm trying to build a large red base for my spaceship to sit on. But it all begins with trusses. And my thoughts are, I started out looking at uh, building to the amount of brick uh, that I have. So I'll just go through a couple of truss types. The first one is this guy, this truss. So that's a 9, that's an 11, and <clears throat> it has to have, you know, you could make it shorter or longer depending on what you want. I wanted it to be this element because I had a, more of them, which would give it more height for each stack. Okay, And then I started to assemble them together by using a fun little technique, which I will show you right here. This is more for speed. It might be for strength because I have some ideas on that. But all of these Technic pinholes are act like tubes. So these were on the pick a brick wall. And now you do need strong fingers for this, but you can cram it down and cram it down. And now I have locked these two members together using studs. So you'd want to use a hammer and hammer this down in to make sure it's really tight. But very quickly you can assemble trusses by doing this. Making sense? And they're gonna, there's going to be a gap because plates are always even numbers. Uh, the Technic brick is always odd numbers. Um, but, you know, for an industrial look, which I kind of threw together here, I'm just alternating the way the plates are oriented together. And I don't have enough pieces, or I ran out of pieces to do the 90 degrees. So I'm just temporarily kind of putting things together to make start to build a very large truss but then I got to thinking okay so 9 so the 9 and 11 make a perfect triangulated member so maybe there's something by adding 2 to the end and instead of just manufacturing a ton of these I could work out the math of a little bit wider. Once again, I have to use the same height, but height could be variable. But I have the same height here, which is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 13. So that's 13 plus 2, that's 15. And then I have my standard kind of, or a little bit wider frame to it, which would be 6, 9, 11. So 11, 13, and 15. Cool. So that's the bigger, wider truss compared to this one. So that's the biggest I can go because they don't make anything larger than 15. So largest one is going to be 15, right? And then here I was using, I believe it was the 13 high again, but this time shrinking it in by a little bit and doing the little idea there. And then the thinner one would be to use a seven, a seven, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, seven, and still looks like an 11. Let me make sure, nine, 10, 11, yeah. 7, 11, and once again the height can be variable. It just so happened that I'm using the same height as before. So now I have a thinner union. So now I can do a 7 wide, I can do 9 wide, and this last one, I never did count that did I? Or I did 3, 
6, 9, 11. So 7, 9, and 11. 7, 9, 11 wide, standard height. So I can start to mess with different proportions of width or length. And I can use the same studying grip, alternating grip lock uh, to put these side by side and not use a ton of pins, not use a ton of expensive Technic connectors. Um, just very cheap, super fast if you have a hammer or your fingers are strong. And then I thought there was another advantage to kind of plating this stuff like this. So if I'm looking at this like a bridge, and this would be the roadbed, if I <clears throat> lock everything together, studs down, I could put a brick reversed in there, lift it by one plate, and I could put entire large sheets of plates on top. And they'd be reverse studs, so they'd have kind of a nice, weird roadbed, industrial roadbed look to it. Um, and very quickly sheet this whole thing on plastic, so it's not just locked here and locked. I put, I do the same thing, either a large, wide, double brick, or I could use a plate and then put bricks on top. And then eventually you could put large plates overlapping, you know, two plate layers overlapping to make a roadbed that'd be ridiculously strong. And then you can always turn this 90 degrees and you'd get something that could be on the side of the roadbed, right, as a truss element. And if you look, that is still perfectly straight over an incredible length. And there's your side lock right there. So very quickly, um, you know, within 30 minutes I had uh, this first face plate done. You just sit there and you've got your, you know, you've got your different piles and you've got your pins and you can just slam these suckers out and very quickly kind of modularly work out how you want your truss framing to work. And then if I used these good old pins, the pins with the 90 degree pin acceptor, you could pin it in, put a pin there, and then lock it and just zipper line this thing right down the side and have a very, that's how you'd start to get your 90 to 90 degree connections looking like that. Okay, so it'd be really easy or easier to kind of mass manufacture this stuff, put it together, get your scaffolding in place and build a bridge or it could be a building, it could be anything you want to think of, but you can see I'm getting a lot of height very, very quickly. And just kind of playing with the scaffolding as to what effect you want to put together. So that's my idea of the day. And happy Easter to everyone. Check you out later, bye.